Okay, so here we go, our first practice test. Notice what's the front page of this thing. Yes, it's exactly the quiz you just took. So, this will give us an opportunity to practice this one more time and to remind ourselves of the rules that we need to know. Now, the original picture we're starting with is a little upside down triangle and then a right side up trapezoid. And I'm going to put these points where they belong. And I'm going to make a little notation to myself that my triangle is two wide and two down. And my trapezoid is six wide and three up. You don't have to do that, but some of you are having a hard time getting the size right. So maybe if you, you know, carefully identified the size of the original, that would help you. All right, so A. What is happening in this problem? What does that negative do? Flips it how? Upside down. That's an upside down. You, you gotta be careful, because there's two ways to flip it, right? Sideways and upside down. So this is an upside down one. What does the two do? Multiplies the height. Now, kids, that means that your triangle is going to be pointed up and your trapezoid is going to be pointed down, right? That's the upside down part. Then you're going to multiply the height by two. So instead of the triangle being too tall, he will now be four tall. His width is not changing, only his height. So there he is, upside down and four tall. Now, what about the trapezoid? How tall is he? Six. Well, he's three now, he's going to be six. His width isn't changing, so the sideways points aren't changing, but we're making it six big. So that trapezoid looks like that. It's very logical if you know what you're supposed to be doing. All right, now we got this one. What happens here, absolute value of whole problem? That is bottoms up. Now, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to sketch my actual picture, but whatever is on the bottom is going to come up. So that triangle right there, he's not changing shape or size. He's coming up. There he is. What about the trapezoid? It stays the same. We only bring the bottom things up. We don't change the up things. So there it is. That is this much. Now what does this do? Down two. Down two. So I'm going to take my picture here and I'm going to literally drop it down two. So instead of sitting on the axis, I'm going to have this exact same picture, but it's sitting down two. There it is. That red thing is the answer. You don't need this line. You can put it in if it helps you, but that would be the answer. Solomon, sweetheart. If you're going to be here, I need you to be up, okay? If you need to go to work, I'll gladly let you tell. All right, everybody good on that one? Next.
Okay, what happens here? What does this negative mean? Now remember, we already had a negative in our first problem. This one is going to be a sideways flip. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to take care of that flip, which simply means the trapezoid's over here now. It's the same size. It's just over here. So there's my trapezoid. And then my triangle is the same size, but he's over here. Sideways flip. Left becomes right. Then, what does that do? Up one. So I'm going to take this flip thing here that I just did, and I'm going to raise it up one. So if it helps you, you're going to draw it. Oh, that's not right. That's not right. I, it's easier for me to do it point by point. There we go. So there's my red one is my answer. Anybody have a question about those three? I'm getting ready to erase them to be the last two. Any issue with any of those? Ramona? Yep, the y axis is broke because it's actually called a reflection across the y axis. Yep, you just fold it this way. Okay, next. What happens here? Now the, it's another absolute value, but it's only the x that's in the absolute value. So what happens with that one? This was on your quiz and many of you missed it. What, what happens here? Doesn't Solomon? the right side go to the left? Yes. So you draw the right side. So I'm not changing anything. I'm drawing the right side. There it is. That's the right side of my picture. And then I just redraw it on the left side. The same picture on the left side. There it is. the width is divided by uh, 2. This number divides the width. That's what I got <laughs> That number divides the width. So, let's draw our trapezoid. What is the width of the original trapezoid? The width of the original trapezoid is six, but we are going to divide that by two. So now the width of the trapezoid is just three. It is the same height. We haven't changed that. We just squished it, made it half as wide. What about the triangle? How wide is the triangle? Two. two. So now, P is going to be just one wide. Nothing changes height wise. It is only the width that changes. Nothing flips or moves around. It's just the width that's altered. You okay with that? All right, oh my, look at the next problem. Here it is, this is your box. So we should be really good at this now since we just talked about it. 
What is our equation going to be? Y equals what? What is the equation for the volume of this box? 13 minus 2x. 9 minus 2x. And x? Please remember, don't be so excited about the calculator. You gotta write down that equation. So there you go, you wrote it down. Now, what is your domain? X is going to be between two numbers, zero and four and a half, because your domain in the box problem is always between zero and half the smaller dimension. It's the size of a corner, it can't be less than zero. What is the maximum volume of the box going to be? Now, some mistakes that are made, especially since we've just done these and they're in our calculator, don't forget you gotta put in a new equation and a new window. Before you hit graph and start second calcing and all that, put in a new equation and a new window. be some directions, this is fine. All right, number three, find the final cost of your new uniform pants if the price tag says $33.50. There's a 15% discount, so that's minus 15%, and 7% tax, so that's plus 7%. Okay, what am I going to multiply by if there's a 15% discount? 0.85. And what am I going to multiply by if there's a 7% tax? 1.07. Fine, so you type that in on the calculator, and this one will have to be rounded off to the nearest cent, of course. dollars and 47 cents. Is that what you got? Did I do that wrong, Will? I see you looking at it funny. Did I type it in wrong? know why we multiply by 0.85 and 1.07? 100 minus 15 and 100 plus 7. Mamuna? Okay. Alright, number four. A mixture problem. So your framework needs to be amount times percent, amount times percent, amount times percent. That is the framework that will always, always get you the right answer. Six numbers in the problem. For 
percentages are 45 and 75 and 58. Those are the percentages. I'm just copying them right out of the problem. Remember when you put a percentage into your equation, it goes in as a decimal. One amount should be floating around in there. The amount is 32, and the 32 goes with the 75. So we gotta make sure you get it in the right spot. And we wanna know how much of this, so it makes sense for that to be X. And this is the part we just have to use our common sense on. These two added together make that, right? So if I have X and 32 and I'm gonna add them together, then this is going to be 32 plus X, or X plus 32. This is the total. These are the two that add up to this one. These are the two that you're dumping into the bucket to get the total. All right, go ahead and solve the equation. Put a unit um, on your answer. I got 41.85. Make sure everybody's there yet. Okay, so we want to solve this equation. So I moved the 45x over there and got the 13. Then I subtracted this and then I divided.